Let's now have a look at the component lifecycle for updating. And there we actually have to differentiate between updates triggered by the parent, so changing props, and internally triggered updates, so by changing state. Here we'll have the case that the props changed, so that the update is triggered by the parent. The first method which then gets executed, if we implement it, is component will receive props, and we get the upcoming props as an argument here. Now one thing we can do in this method is we can synchronize our local state of the component, if we have one, to the props. So initialize the state with the props, so that we then later can change the state in that component, but get the base state depending on the outer props. If you don't need to synchronize this, you probably don't need to implement this method. What you shouldn't do here is cause side effects, so don't reach out to the web and fetch data or something like that, because this will lead to a re-rendering of the component and hence to performance issues. Now after will receive props, a very interesting method is executed. Should component update. And there we actually get two arguments, the upcoming props and the upcoming state. So basically the props and state which triggered this update. This is a method which may actually cancel the updating process. You can decide if it should or not. Because if you return true here, the updating continues. If you return false, the updating stops. In all the other methods, you never return anything. But here, you can return true or false, and it does have an impact. If you return false, you basically save performance, because React doesn't need to go through the whole component tree and call render and so on. But of course, it may also show to your application showing an incorrect state or basically having an incorrect DOM representation if you use this in a wrong way. Now we'll have a look at this in the next lectures, no worries. In the end, what you should do here is decide whether to continue or not, to continue with the updating, I mean, but you should, as always, not cause side effects. Now, let's assume you did allow the updating process to continue. If you didn't, we're done. But if you did allow that, you reach component will update. Here you also get access to the upcoming props and upcoming state. There again, you may sync your state to props and you shouldn't cause side effects. It might be the better place to synchronize your state to props because unlike component will receive props, here you know that you're going to continue with the updating. So you might not spend effort and resources for something which then doesn't matter anyways. Once this has executed successfully, you reach the render method again, hence rendering the JSX and telling React what will actually be the result of your updated component. And there again, as always, you should prepare and structure your JSX code. Thereafter, React will go ahead and update all child components, all child component props to be precise. And that of course may trigger updates for the child components, just as it did trigger an update for this component. And then it will call component did update at the end. There you may now cause side effects, just like in did mount. You mustn't update the state here though, because this will trigger a re-render. So it's basically comparable to component did mount, just for the updating case. Now let's implement these hooks too, to see when these get executed and how that behaves.